Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Thursday, November 21st, 2019. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading that's dated for the 21st of November, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on that day. Whenever that you find this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that time. Uh, one thing I want to say, you guys might hear a bunch of noise coming coming from the street. Um, for those of you that remember, uh, they tore down the building across the street from me, which just so happens to be building 144. Um, and for those of you that have been on this whole twin flame thing for a while, you probably recognize that number. 144 is, is seen a few different ways. One, it's seen as there's 144,000 twin flames, actual individuals that embody the twin flame energy in the world. Or there's another point of view that states that 144,000 is an actual frequency. So it would be, it would be 144,000 hertz, which is, um, a par is said to be the uh, a frequency of unconditional love. And for those of you that are familiar with the twin flame journey you know that the, it's all about unconditional love and bringing unconditional love into the world well building 144 was across the street from me and they tore it down over the summer and it the, the lot had sat vacant for a bit um and last monday which was okay time <laughs> The time I just watched my my the time on my clock I saw it at one two three a few like ten seconds ago and then I just looked back and it was at one two three again. Time is an illusion, kids. Okay, <laughs> this is like the third time now that I've noticed that the the timer on my my laptop as I'm recording this has changed while we're recording. That's so crazy. But anyway. They started working on the building again last Monday, which was November 11th or 11-11. Like on that day, they came in and they started, you know, fixing the fence and whatnot and fixing things up. And ever since then, they've slowly but surely been working on the, the building, the lot again. So right now they're digging up the foundation or digging up the ground, I guess, to, to lay the foundation. So you might hear some of that. Okay. All right. Um, oh, and I had today I have my grease cup. My grease mug was sent in by Annette. For those of you that have been watching like Happy Hour and all that, you are probably aware of who Annette is. Thank you so much, Annette. I love this mug, especially the color scheme. Yay. Okay. So, oh, and this shirt. I wore this during Happy Hour last night, but because I only wore it for like two hours, I was like, I'm wearing it again. It's not dirty. So, this shirt was given was sent in by Nancy. Yeah, I love this shirt. It's beautiful. All right, guys. So let's get into the energies for today. So as I was connecting to the collective, I saw yellow and then I saw green, um, which actually corresponds with the latest video that Aluna Ash put out about um, the evolution of humanity and whatnot and how uh, how I, I would rather you guys watch it because she explains it the best. Um, it's about, I, I really don't even, I couldn't even put it into words. I watched it, I listened to it, I watched it once and it, it made sense. It was great, but um, but basically it corresponds with that. I'm, I'm not even going to try to explain it because I'm not going to do it justice. But if you guys are interested, if you're, I'm sorry, I want to light some sage. If you're interested in it, um, then I would recommend that you watch it. It's on about, it's one of her latest videos. It's about the evolution of humanity or whatnot, whatever. Um, but I saw yellow, which went into green, which kind of corresponds with that video. But then as I started like really channeling and pulling cards, um, trying to get a little bit of a pre-shuffle message here, I started to see purple. And it was interesting because it was like, what I feel like is happening with that purple energy, that being of higher centers, higher wisdom, um, you know, whatnot, whatever. I was feeling like and hearing like we were just kind of like sitting 
in this higher wisdom, just kind of like enveloped in it, wrapped up in it, not, I guess, not too really worried about the past or the future. We're just sitting in this divine, unconditional love and unconditional knowing, um, just this divine knowing and whatnot. And so that's when justice came out, okay? And then I, that's when it really, the message really sunk in. It was like, oh, okay, so we're sitting in this higher awareness, this wisdom, and just allowing justice to be served because overall energy, seven of swords, and then the high priestess, which in my opinion is the, the card that would represent what that purple energy embodies or this card would embody what the purple energy represents divine wisdom higher consciousness psychic or intuit intuitive ability higher understanding that whatnot whatever and it's this side of the of the high priestess in which we see behind her we've like i like to say that on this side of the card we've been let in on her secrets and so it's kind of like we're those of us that I'm channeling for here, we're all just kind of sitting, sitting in this awareness, watching all this deception and whatnot happening, all the while justice is being served systematically throughout time. We don't have to worry about this. We don't have to strive for it. We really don't have to do much else. It's like, the, it's like we know, we understand that, or at least there is a knowing or an understanding that's available to you. Um, <clears throat> that says whatever is done in darkness will come to light. You don't have to do anything <laughs> to make that happen, right? Excellent, guys. I love that. I love that, y'all. All right, so let's get into the rest of the reading here. The Four of Wands just caught my eye. Um, and it's really not even about being smug or or feeling like you're better than others or better than someone else because you have this this higher perspective it's not even about that you have this higher perspective yep temperance <laughs> temperance you have this higher perspective because you worked on it you've cultivated you you've cultivated it you've you've been working on developing this balance this alchemy right and it's not like it's anything anyone else can can't do or is incapable of doing so like that whole that whole premise of oh what you think you're better than us because of xyz it's like no i just actually did what I, what was necessary to reach this point like literally that's all i did you can do it too <laughs> you know and so that four of wands was talking about that spiritual foundation that you laid for yourself that anyone is capable of Anyway, NT way. Moving on. Let's get into the rest of the the rest of the message here and see what we've got for us. Yes. I'm gonna move my mug over a little bit. Okay. Hi spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday, November 21st, 2019. much spirit okay so here's the deal guys because what i'm seeing here is the yellow into the green so we're moving from a more action based, masculine based um, uh ego willpower type energy into the heart chakra into love into unconditional love um and part of what is taking place here in terms of us just kind of like sitting in this higher wisdom is we're realizing that we don't really need to take any other action than putting forth love okay which is in, uh, moving from like solar plexus centered um, consciousness into heart consciousness right heart centered consciousness so it's not about, again, it's not about being smug. It's not about thinking you're better than anybody. It's not about thinking, oh, well, someone's got it. <laughs> They've got it coming. <laughs> it's, it's not even really about that. It's more about just the wisdom and the understanding that 
love brings, unconditional love brings into your reality, into your consciousness, and just allowing people to be. Uh, and that's one of the things that I've been hearing a lot lately. When I find myself being judgmental or critical of another person that I pass on the street, will say, there is a moment where I will hear my higher self say, let them be who they are. Why do we need to judge them? And that's a really good point. It's like, why do we, wh why, why should I have to, why should I feel it's my place to judge somebody else just because what I see on the surface doesn't line up with my ideals or what I would want in my life? You know what I mean? Like, why, why does someone deserve to be judged for that? Let them be who they are. Let them do what they want to do. If they want to, if somebody wants to, you know, run around eating fast food, let them run around eating fast food. If someone wants to, I mean, I don't even want to list a bunch of things because I'm not trying to alienate people. You see what I mean? That's exactly what I mean. It's like there's no, there isn't even a point listing a bunch of different things. Why do that? It doesn't matter. Let people do what they're going to do. Let people live how they're going to live, you know? And if there's some sort of justice that needs to be served, it'll happen. It's none of your business, none of your concern. Don't you even worry about it. Don't waste any energy on it. It'll happen when it's supposed to happen. You know what I mean? The universe has got it under control. So, a boop. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give this five shuffles, guys. And then we'll see what we've got for today. Or what else we have for today, right? Right. To Thursday, November 21st, 2019. Three. So Mercury has finally stationed direct, guys. We are going to be in the shadow period for a little bit, but four. And it's really, the shadow period is really just like that flowy time where it's not like mercury act, like it's like you have to give the the energy the, t the energy time to like change its momentum and, and start going in a different direction it's not just like a oop, there it goes it's done you know what i mean like you have to it's been going in this way you got to let it slow down and then it's gonna go back you know what i mean so that's that's basically at least that's how i understand the shadow period yeah five okay so let's see, let's see what we've got for today, guys. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time here. Woo! Okay. All right. And there we have it. Wow. Okay. Overall energy is the high priest. <laughs> Holy shit. The high priestess <laughs> with the tower. And this oh, Lord in heaven, y'all. My, my, my. My, my, my. Okay. They're saying turn them all upright. All right. So what I'm seeing with the high priestess and the tower here, it's literally the universe serving up some sort of tower moment. Um, and at this point, we see the high, we see the front side of the high priestess, right? So I'm almost, I'm getting an energy of like. It's almost as if, you know that saying, the chickens have come home to roost? Um, it's like the high priestess is coming forward with her wisdom and her knowledge, and she's she's stepping up to the plate, and it's like she's going to be dishing out some sort of justice or some sort of tower moments here. Um, that's really the only way I can... I can describe this feeling. It's like she's like this universal systematic judge almost 
Um, and then here we have. You could, uh, to be honest, you could also see, you could also see the high priestess as like a guardian. It's as if those of us that have tapped into the wisdom of the universe here in this higher, higher awareness, higher knowledge, we're standing behind her, protected by her. It's like we've been initiated. <laughs> where once we were indoctrinated by the Hierophant, now it's almost as if we've been indoctrinated by the High Priestess, but it's not even that. It's more of an initiation than an, ind in than an indoctrination. I understand that they're very similar energies, but indoctrinating indoctrination to me has a feeling of brainwashing, whereas initiation has a feeling of understanding the laws understanding the circumstances understanding the wisdom and the knowledge 100 percent by choice if you choose to and then once you understand that allowed in on basically allowed into the club whereas indoctrination what the hierophant represents in my at least as a reader for me um it's more of like a, a an imposed brainwashing or face ostracization or face excommunication that kind of energy okay and that's what we have the end of here we have the queen of swords the world the seven of swords again and the ten of swords okay so it seems here and and, and i feel like this is you this is you as the queen of swords that's putting a stop to these energies saying no more we're done we're done here that's enough I've had enough. I've had of the tom. I had enough of the tomfoolery. I've had enough of the sickness. I've had enough of the disease. I've had enough of the twisted narcissism. I'm putting an end to it. I'm putting an end to the deception. I'm putting an end to the lies, the cheating, the backstabbing, the, the stealing. I'm done. Says this Queen of Swords energy. You're literally ending, closing this off by yourself now. It, it, you are standing in this place of empowerment from the high priestess here. But it's not the high priestess that is, that is saying you have to put this to rest. Or it's not the high priestess. I, 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 I want to say it's not the high priestess that's, quote, influencing you to do it. But I guess technically it would be. It's the knowledge that she holds. It's the wisdom and the understanding that she holds that is influencing you to do this so it's again this is not the same as like what the hierophant potentially energy would do now i please understand that i do get that the hierophant energies are not all bad okay but there is a common theme right now especially for those of us that are in this twin flame collective or divine counterpart collective whatnot whatever those of us that are striving to something striving towards something else which is actually coming out over on this side we'll get to that in a second um there is a there is a there is a common theme of going against the patriarchy and and the oligarchy and um, I guess the oligarchy actually would be a better term for it, but it is very patriarchal. And striving or working towards a world that is more balanced between masculine and feminine energy, right? So we're not going to have a patriarchy and we're not going to have a matriarchy. We're going to have a balance of the two energies coming together, um, working in tandem. That's what we're striving for here. So, But I, un I understand that, you know, Hierophant doesn't have to be all bad, but... In this case, we're talking about the negative side of it. We're talking about the indoctrination. We're talking about the dogma. We're talking about um, the conformity, all that stuff, right? So what I'm picking up here is in terms of like, say, what the Hierophant would represent. And also keep in mind, the Hierophant is the, the, is the, um, the counterpart to the High Priestess, okay? All right. So the Hierophant energy would be very forceful, very controlling, very dominating, very... Um, um, manipulative, you know, you, you must, you must, you must assimilate you or, or face the consequences is something that the Hierophant would say. But the high priestess here, at least in this circumstance, the high priestess here says, um, actually, there's more you need to know about this. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to learn it and do with it what you will. But because of the nature of this energy or this wisdom, now you are in a total place of free will in to to make some better decisions for yourself to 
end the cycles of destruction and sabotage and and lying, cheating, deception, and all that good stuff, right? I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. The high priestess energies here are way more beneficial to the law of free will. And the only reason I say that is because the high priestess strives to give you a complete understanding of the laws of the laws of the universe, not a closed minded, manipulated, man made system of law that's only meant to control you, that's only meant to keep you, in many cases, asleep. The high priestess is all about awakening and awareness. Okay? Or at least these universal laws, universal energies are all about awakening and awareness, right? Now, to this point, there is a necessity between the, high, the Hierophant and the High Priestess. The Hierophant, oh goodness, my mic is freaking out. And I really don't know why. I really don't know why, you guys. It does this, and this is, the, this is a brand new mic. I don't know what's wrong. I just, I just noticed that it's freaking out. It's 20 minutes in. I don't know if it freaked out anymore. I apologize if it did, but <laughs> I have not, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do about it. Other than get a completely different mic system, which is something that I can look into and investigate, but that's gonna cost a lot of money and it's gonna cost space that I don't necessarily have right now. So we're gonna work with what we have I recognize that there may be a, there may have been some issues with the mic and the quality of the audio. I apologize. Moving forward, the hierophant does serve a purpose. Again, that energy is not all bad. Okay, what we are breaking free from is the conformist and indoctrination and brainwashing and mind control elements of what the Hierophant represents in today's world. And it, it all, even those sides of the Hierophant energy, they still served a purpose because it helped us understand the need for, yes, some sort of uniform um, collective agreement upon certain things, but also it helped us learn the need for individuality and the need for individual ways of expression, whether that be spiritually or religiously. I mean, and it's not to say that religion should be done away with. I personally feel like religion is a stepping stone in terms of human evolution and spirituality. And religion is represented by, the do by <laughs> I was going to say the dogma. <laughs> yes, but the hierophant, okay? So, so, while we're working on breaking free from the more negative, conformist, controlling, brainwashing, mind control elements of the Hierophant, they, the Hierophant energies still served a purpose, okay? Excellent. Um, so let's move on to the next side of this. We have the Eight of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, and the Nine of Wands. This is what we're striving for. A balance between give and take, six of pen pentacles, reciprocity, care, and concern for your fellow man. You could almost call this a bit of a socialist energy, I guess, but whatever, call it, call it what you will. It doesn't matter. We're moving into a time period where everyone is taken care of, everyone is provided for, there is always enough, you don't have to worry about lack, period. This is what we're moving into, guys. And this is what we're creating for future generations, Eight of Pentacles. And this Eight of Pentacles, didn't it come out yesterday like this? I believe it did. Now, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Nine of Wands, okay? We're striving. We're wounded warriors here. We're battered and bruised. But you know what? We're going to fucking make it. Regardless of what anyone else has to say about it, we're going to fucking make it. So you can either join us or not. And if you choose not to, that's fine. You'll still be able to live a really great life for yourself. I mean, yeah, why not? I don't know. Or whatever. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> All right, kids. Let's move on to some uh, clarification here. I'm going to go with the Wild Unknown 
tarot for we're just going to look a little deeper into these energies for you all right here we go So, Queen of Swords, the world, Seven of Swords, Ten of Swords. Let's look a little deeper into this for the collective here. See, now I'm seeing green. So this is you, even though we have the Queen of Swords energy, this is still you being in your heart-centered, heart chakra awareness. Okay, so, wow, the first, the, the card on top of this pile that's fallen out here is the Two of Cups. There you go, with the Ten of Swords. At the bottom as at the bottom of the deck as the root of the energy for you guys okay so there's the ten of swords twice right there right there ten of swords twice okay um now what spirit said here with this two of wands i'm sorry two of cups this is the balance between masculine and feminine energy this is you the, now the reason why you're able to with this queen of swords energy be like enough is enough i'm done moving on next it's because you have this balance. You found this balance between masculine and feminine energy. And what I'm feeling specifically is that many of you have found um, a sense of healthy masculine energy as opposed to the twisted form of masculinity that the patriarchy promotes. Okay? That's excellent. Yep, there you go. Look at that. Underneath the Two of Cups, you have the Wheel of Fortune. You do have the Seven of Swords again, but you have the Ace of Swords with that. Okay, so deception, lies, cheating, whatnot, whatever, whatever was deceitful in the past is now seen clearly with the Ace of Swords. And then you have the Six of Cups. Again, this Six of Cups energy is giving me a feeling of this here with this Eight of Pentacles. It's giving me a feeling of... Um, uh, keeping future generations in mind. Also, it gives a feeling of clearing up old ancestral patterns. But the strongest feeling I was getting is future generations. All right? This is beautiful, guys. This is really, really beautiful. Preparing or paving the way for those future generations to continue this work and to flourish within, you know, the, begin the work we've already done. Okay? I love that. I really, really love that. All right. That was quick. That was really quick. Um, let's move to the second side here. So this is what we're working towards, right? Eight of, pen uh, eight of pentacles, yeah, to the six of pentacles, but with the nine of wands. Do not give up, okay? Absolutely do not give up. Please do not give up. Let's get some clarity. Yes, there you go. Ace of wands with strength. Okay, so this really feels like being inspired to lead the way, being inspired to pave the way in some, in some way. Ooh, whoa. Oh man, I'm going to look, I'll show you guys that in a second. But what this means, what this is saying here, having the strength to pave the way, to lead the way, the Ace of Wands. Normally, I would see the torchbearer energy as the um, the knight of wands. But here, this is just you picking up that torch and care. That's what I'm seeing here with this ace of wands, carrying it, lighting the way and having the strength to do so. The strength and the wherewithal to follow through in face of none other than the Hierophant. And it's really quite interesting, you guys, because what I'm getting from the Hierophant energy here is like a proud father that's looking at their children or looking at their offspring, and, and despite whatever it is was thrown at them, they made, they made a way. They found a way. They're doing the damn thing, regardless of whatever was thrown at them. Again, these Hierophant energies served a purpose. Whether that is 
extremely difficult for you to wrap your head around it or not at this moment in time. Ultimately, you will understand, says the high priestess. Look at that. Balance between masculine and feminine energies. Ultimately, we landed on the counterparts. I want to say, in many cases, the ultimate counterparts in the Hierophant and the High Priestess, right? That is so beautiful, you guys. So beautiful. Okay. So now, I want to close, start closing the reading with uh, Spirit's Take. And then we're going to go with uh, our Oracle guidance for today which it is going to come from the Lightworker Oracle, yeah? All right. So I want to get Spirit's take on this, and already I'm feeling any sort of advice or encouragement that Spirit might have for us in this situation in terms of what's going on here. Okay. All right, kids. Let's see what we've got for us. One, two. Yes, this one. Okay. That's enough. Overall, and oh, overall energy is the lovers, guys. Oh, boy. Okay. Give me a second here. Wow. Okay, um, very interesting, very, very interesting. So again, what we're talking about here in The Lovers, this is, um, th this is another instance of the balance between masculine and feminine energy. So you see you have the Hierophant and the High Priestess here. Those are two counterparts, right? Those two are counterparts. And then you have the counterparts within humanity the high the the the, the uh, i'm sorry the lovers so you have the masculine and feminine this is also like a depiction of adam and eve right the in in biblical terms the original man and the original woman right so you have that balance between masculine and feminine energy that is um here in hierophant and the high priestess but then is then mirrored into humanity between the masculine and the feminine right you then have another depiction of the masculine and the feminine in the Queen of Cups and the King of Swords. And I love the way this is depicted, the King of Cups and the Queen of Swords, because this embodies, in my opinion, three-dimensionally speaking or physically speaking, humani humanity-wise, this is the embodiment of the highest principles of masculine and feminine energy. Masculine being logical, diplomatic, strong, secure, honest, faithful, willing to see all sides of the situation before he makes his decision and yet still making a firm decision, being able to see things clearly as they truly are, compassionate even, when needed, when necessary. And then you have the feminine, emotion, balance, intuition, psychic ability, um, unconditional love, emotional balance, emotional security, right? This is, the, I mean, this is such a beautiful representation of these two energies. And you have the seven of pentacles here in between them, having learned the lesson, having reaping, having reaped what you've sown, learn from the contrast, learning from the contrast still, of course, that never really stops, that never really ends, and planting new and better seeds for the future with this balance of masculine and feminine energy under your belt, right? And then you have the new start and temperance. The new start being the page of pentacles, and then you have temperance here. Temperance is that alchemization, the alchemization that is leading you to be able to express yourself in this new and positive and beneficial way, not just for yourself, but for the rest of the world. This is that reset button or that level up, if you will right that is so beautiful you guys i really really love it 
Okay, so let's get your oracle guidance to close out today's reading. What do you say? Yes, I think that sounds like a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three shuffles. Here we go. And please keep in mind that if you're not necessarily finding this right now, like you're not finding this to be your life right now, um, but you're watching this reading and on a certain, I feel like, I feel like there are some of you out there that are watching this reading that are like, okay, well, I'm not really experiencing this right now in my life. And yet for some reason, it still kind of resonates for you. Then that means that you're on your way here. This is, I mean, this is the path that you're following. And for those of you that are not necessarily like even really resonating with it, but you're still listening, you're still paying attention. This is something that you're aligning with, or at least that you can align with, right? Basically, my point is that the fact that you're listening to this right now is indicative of something, is indicative of a good change that could be coming into your life very, very soon, if you're not already experiencing this. Yes? Okay. So we got, for our Oracle Guidance today, we got card number 32, Divine Grace, the Law of Efficiency. Mm. Okay. This says, it is time for your life. It is time your life became easier. It is time for you to walk the way of divine grace with trust, simplicity, and acceptance. You do not have to try to make things happen. See, I was just saying that in the beginning of the reading. <laughs> Just, okay, you can gracefully act without attachment and trust that all will be as it is meant to be. Surrender your struggles now as, a, as you allow life to serve you with love and kindness. This is the most efficient use of your energy and will lead to the best results. I do want to read the rest of this. So, buckle up. <laughs> the law of efficiency encourages us to work smarter rather than always working harder. It is like learning to allow a wave to carry you to shore rather than swimming the entire way with your own efforts alone or even against the current, which would make the journey even harder. It is like planting a seed at the right time so nature will help it bloom in the spring rather than planting it during the dead of winter when it takes a lot of effort to keep it alive and even then it may not survive. This is the intelligence of the law of efficiency and divine grace at work. To hitch your wagon to the universe in this way, you need to learn to listen. This means tuning in to what feels right or wrong at any given time. Sometimes you will want to push forward, yet your intuitive knowing will guide you to rest. Sometimes you will want to hide from a challenge, and yet in your bones it is time to step up and shine with boldness despite the fear you may feel. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, you got it. The universe has a sense of natural flow, cycles, and timing that assures us that it supports every dream we dare to dream and that everyone can come to fruition in due course. It may not look exactly as you expect, but if you have set it in motion with desire and intention, karmic law will ensure that it finds expression. For this to happen in the most loving, graceful, and easy way, you must learn to hear, feel and sense the currents of life and work with them rather than push against them. This is about common sense, allowing yourself to be helped, not making things more difficult for yourself than they need to be. Imagine that you have a chance to share a feeling of love in a room full of receptive people. The time is right. They are open to your efforts. They are open, excuse me, and your efforts create the maximum effect for love's success. Or you could expend the same amount of time and energy by arguing with one disinterested person in an attempt to get them to understand and receive your love, even though they actually have no interest in doing so. They just wish to have their own point of view and for you to agree with that. One is working with the law of efficiency and the other is working against the tide of life. 
It is not bad to choose the harder way sometimes. It can be a great learning experience. Like I said, that Hierophant energy served a purpose for sure. But you are being encouraged with this oracle to explore the easier and more graceful way more often, especially at this time in your life, because there is a helping hand, a natural wave of energy in life that is going to be able to support your rising spirit in manifesting something truly beautiful and special in the world. The law of efficiency is also sometimes known as the path of, le of, the path of least resistance. We must find the strength that comes from letting go and trusting that the universe knows what it is doing. It takes spiritual maturity to cede to wisdom greater than your own immediate understanding. Then you are surfing the wave rather than swimming against the current. How efficient to work with life and, if, and its cycles rather than believing you must struggle and strain to be heard, loved, rewarded, and inspired. You have the maturity in you. Trust now. Trust that all will come in time. Beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.